I'm Damon Zell, and this is your Eve Echoes Weekly News Update, where we take a deep dive into all the happenings of the week. But first, if you can tag that subscribe button, ring that bell, share and like the video, you can stay up to date with everything that this channel has to offer. I'm going to start off this week with an update on the little one, because I didn't do an update last week, and people got to me in the DMs asking where the baby update was. Well, he's doing fantastic. In fact, he is rolling over back and forth. He's not crawling yet, but he has uh, mastered rolling over. Now, you have to remember, he is, yes, eight months old right now, uh, chronologically, but developmentally, he is only about uh, five and a half to six months early because he was born two and a half months early. He's not sitting up on his own yet, but with assistance, he is. Uh, the doctor says he's hitting all the targets. He's right where he's supposed to be uh, for his developmental age. And he's uh, just being a happy baby. Uh, however, my wife is uh, getting less sleep because he has started waking up in the middle of the night for some odd reason. Um, he's just waking up like around 3 o'clock in the morning, uh, just getting hungrier and hungrier. And uh, then he's also waking up. He is the only person in my family that is a morning person and waking up around 6 a.m. on the dot every day. So as I'm coming in from work to go to bed, he is just waking up for the day. And uh, yeah, so he's doing fantastic. And I uh, thank everyone who keeps sending me uh, questions to see how he's doing. I appreciate it all. So moving right along, we have the... Uh, patch notes of this week which there aren't any uh, the only thing that we do have is the one thing we get every week and that's the updated uh, market transactions prices you know estimated prices due to the market market transactions however even though there is no real patch notes we did get four bug fixes this week uh, those bug fixes were they fixed an issue where sentry guns didn't attack players in a warp state they fixed an issue where insurance claims couldn't be completed if the order contained integrated rigs. Uh, they fixed an issue where entering faction war games could cause a black screen, and they fixed an issue where the Wheel of Steel core skin wasn't displayed properly when uh, applied to certain ships. Now currently the capital event is still going on, the server is at 70%, uh, but we should be seeing a turnover this week from the dreadnoughts to carriers because they went on record saying for this capital event uh, until capital's launch they started off with the uh, probing to find the the wrecks now what they're going to do is they're going to have a two-stage faction warfare event where they want two weeks to be the dreads and they're going to have two weeks for carriers so that every player can get their hands on one of these capitals and see how it feels to pilot it now, in a uh, developer diary, they did go on to state that when capitals do drop, there are going to be certain anomalies uh, that are going to be popping up that will drop debris as well as capital modules. Now, in these NPC uh, anomalies that you're going to find, uh, I believe they're called, they want to record say, the graveyard. So I'm not sure if they're going to be the, the same graveyards as the Halloween event from last year, but who knows, but they're going to drop the modules as well as debris for these capital ships. Uh, there are also going to be NPC capitals within those rifts. Now they did go on to say that there are going to be certain anomalies coming out for uh, capital ships and instead of wasting time warping to them, what's going to happen is you're going to enter this NDS, um, uh, sorry, this uh, Nihilus space from a Sino field where you just pop out your station, you light the Sino, you enter, you kill everything in there, and then you follow the Sino back, and the dock back up. Uh, that's the only information we've gotten on those particular anomalies as of right now. Now, they have been advertising a event on their social media, both their Twitter and uh, Facebook group, about capitals. Uh, be the first to get, uh, you know, your capital with uh, advances in PI and materials. Nothing else has been uh, found out about this. We haven't gotten anything in the content creator section or the senior content creator section. The devs haven't commented on this. So this event that they have been advertising is still 100% a mystery. 
Now we did get our four weekly developer Q&A question and answers. Uh, the first one was, uh, would it be possible to add the ETA uh, estimated time of arrival for trips when you say your autopilot according to the warp speed bonuses through well no and high sec uh, and the ship characteristics such as the mercurial uh, ships how they warp faster uh, seem to move the you know that that whole um, section of ships which escapes my mind right now so don't kill me in the comments um, but the developers answered back with, uh, thank you for your suggestion. We will add the ETA in a near future update. Uh, they know that the players definitely want to see this. So that is going to be a good thing. You can actually uh, estimate your trips. In other words, if you're joining a roam and you're an interceptor and your party is, say, 30 jumps away from you, you can tell them exactly how long it's going to be for you to rendezvous with them. Or this will also help you set up certain roams if you're going to know you're going to be, you know, it's going to take me 55 jumps to get to Jita, and it calculates out to like 35 minutes. You know I'm going to go AFK, and I'll come back in 35 minutes. The next question was uh, that they were wondering, were there any short-term or long-term plans to bring in the information command burst to increase weapon disruption modules? Uh, is there a feeling that they would be an interesting dynamic for fleet-on-fleet -fleet battles? Uh, the developer turns around and says that they also believe that modules like Information Command Burst and Mining Foreman Links which will enrich the game experience. But as for the Informational Command Burst, uh, will affect the balance of battle and the Mining Foreman Link affects the balance of yield. They may need to do a little more time for verification and testing uh, and discussion before they actually release them uh, later on down the road. The fourth one is also asking about uh, Destroy and Frigger classes. Uh, with the new balance coming up, they want to know what is going to be viable for their roles. Uh, they're saying that currently there are many of the ship choices which relegate, uh, relegate, ah, relegated down to just use an interceptor for the frigate. Uh, they want to see basically, they want to see variety in these ships, and I don't blame them. Uh, basically, whenever you are flying a uh, frigate, it is basically, you know, just go to the interceptor because it is the strongest ship out there right now in that class. The developer answers back, the always you know, thank them for the suggestions, they've received some feedback on the diversity of frigates and destroyers before. Uh, they were going to solve this problem in the next balance adjustment, however they have decided on a specific plan. Uh, hopefully this balance they don't buff interceptors yet again. And the last question is, uh, do they plan on introducing bombs for the covert bombs uh, bombers? and smart bombs for bigger ships to combat drones and interceptors. Uh, very good uh, features on both. They're both on EVE Online and they both have their places uh, as well as countering uh, those type of attacks. They actually have no immediate plans to add smart bombs or uh, the bomb dropping feature. Uh, so, I, I don't know. I. For me, I don't see how hard it is, really. I mean, this game is basically a clone, or their take, on a pre-existing game. And these features have been in the game for years. Years. And the whole beauty of the stealth bomber was the bomb feature. Where you, you line up, and you, you pick your target, you fly in, you release your bomb, and about, you know, 30 km later, it explodes and takes out anything in that area. I, I don't see how hard it is to implement this. I don't know why they keep sitting on this. They, they just keep thinking bigger is better. And, you know, let's just let's go to the, the top tier, biggest ship we can possibly get. Instead of working on features that should already be in the game. But, uh, yeah, those are your developer Q&As as of this week, uh, the 6th through the 12th. This week in your Plex Market Report... Plex is still steady at 1.2 million per Plex. Uh, it's going to be rock steady around this area, uh, I think, for some time. Um, but again, you know, buy it when you see it cheap, sell it when you see it high. I don't see it going any higher than 2 million per Plex anywhere in the near future. Uh, but that is your Plex market report. However, uh, 
I would keep an eye out on modules due to the war that is raging across the server. We are seeing a spike on certain modules that would be your um, large newts and nosses. That would be high slots. That would be your propulsion rigs. Um, auxiliary three uh, rigs are going, you know, skyrocketing currently, uh, as well as your large micro warp drives and afterburners. We're seeing a, a, a price spike in those as well. Speaking of the war, it is still raging on throughout half the server. And with Pangen on their heels currently, digging in in their defensive, No and uh, Silent and Hunk keep pressing forward on their advanced offensive. This week I have gotten 8 confirmed Citadel kills through Hunk and Associates, uh, as well as 2 systems uh, and Tosist. And yes, to, to appease those in my comments last week, I understand I mispronounced the word and it was driving people insane. I am sorry for that and I am using the correct pronunciation of it this week. Entosis, not entonosis. Entosis. I got you. Read you loud and clear. Moving on. Alright, we start off this week with uh, the Citadel is destroyed. We have system, uh, the Citadel in system D Tech 3G IQ destroyed by uh, no silent and honk or as people are saying you know no, uh, no shush or shush no I like to throw honk in there because I feel they're their own small little entity even though they are part of the silent federation they are kind of their own entity and they've been fighting this war before the official war months before it began uh, the next citadel down was that of one tech two J four P. This was also in Dell, also taken down uh, by Silent and No Forces. The next one that fell was in Fountain this time in KVN Tech three six. That's the Netflix and Drill Citadel. We have the Iron Crescent Citadel being taken down in Fountain as well in System D zero G. D tech D I don't know, I can't read this damn thing. Or zero O G zero tech zero. It, it's in Fallon. You can see it right here, it's on the screen, it's on Fallon. It's 9.3 billion system. Uh, that was also taken by the Silent No Forces. Following that Citadel was the one in Taurus in Fountain in L Tech A5 XP. The next system to be taken via uh, Entosis was TEG Tech SD. The next one that fell was in JTAC RQMF. The next one after that was in Quirious this time in WTAC IX39. And the last one that I have destroyed is the system in K7D TAC II. Now, the other system that was uh, taken via Entosis was that, again, of YRNJ. Uh, that would be Hunk's Ancestral Home. They've been playing tug-of-war with that Citadel back and forth. Now, there was also a massive fight that got a lot of hype this week, and that is in the system of k Tech 4 in Aquarius. That is on the first system outside of Ned. Now... I was actually part of this this battle, and as you, if you've seen the last video that I put out, you basically know my feelings on this, but we're going to touch on it again. Now, I am sorry, I don't have the statistics for each of the fights, or if there were fights on a lot of these citadels, because uh, I have had some family members uh, sick, and I did have, and I, I, you know, I, I don't want to stir up anybody, but I did have two deaths in the family due to the pandemic uh, down uh, in the south. So my mind really wasn't 100% on uh, digging up the, the footage and the statistics of these. I just wanted to make sure that I got the correct ones that were taken down. Um, but moving on, uh, the system of K4. Now, that was a massive battle, and the system did reach uh, around between 800 and 900 players. 
However, tie-dye was never uh, enforced and never clicked on, and this fight was plagued. I mean, massively plagued by disconnects, black screens, um, basically, you name it, it happened. The the non-firing weapons, the warping off of grids. Um, it's it, it's basically inspired the last video for the the PSA, the rally, to uh, basically shock the devs into what is actually going on in their game and how these servers cannot handle these large battles, and these servers, even after a year. Um, still cannot handle these large battles. Now, the rally call, and I do want to thank every single one of you that did heed the call and that did uh, basically mention this to the devs, to the community at large. We did see some action uh, brought by this. And it forced a response from Joseph, the community manager, where he makes an announcement saying that, Pilots, we have discovered that some of you have had lag and disconnection issues during large battles. Apparently, this is news to them. In most cases, this is caused by an insufficient client performance. The development uh, team is aware of the problem and is arranging additional manpower to help solve this. Since it will take more time to completely solve these related problems, in order to optimize the game experience of the current players, we plan to release a mode that optimizes client performance in early November. In this mode, the player's ship, model, and related visual effects will be hidden to reduce client lag in large-scale battles. Potato mode. This is only a temporary solution. We are sorry for the inconvenience caused to all of you. We will launch a more permanent solution as soon as possible to better solve this problem. Thank you for your understanding and support. Now, what I don't understand is why it took me um, to basically put them on blast and and to get the community to put them on blast to fix this problem, which we've been experiencing for over a year now. I mean, not for nothing, but server stability should be one of the mainstays of your game, especially since you're advertising and toting it as, you know, these hundreds of players fighting each other in, certain, in these specific systems. But I digress. And I want to thank everyone for the community. Uh, content creator and pilot alone uh, that came out in support of this. I do try to walk that line of, you know, being unbiased, but I I will take it to them and I will hold their feet over the fire. I don't care if I'm a content creator or not officially. I don't care that I'm a senior content creator. I don't care if I lose that status. I will hold them accountable for their own games and their shortcomings of their game. I am here for you, for the community. Now, as far as that battle went, that battle in K4 raged on for four plus hours. Now, I was in that battle for a while. I, I, I had to drop out of the fight, not only because of things that were going on uh, here at home, but also because I felt I was a liability. I couldn't maintain uh, anger. I couldn't target I couldn't fight now I was playing on a state of the you know one of the top of the line phones I'm on a Samsung S21 Ultra currently right now I don't use an emulator when I play I don't use my PC and I had to reduce basically everything I had to put graphics down to low I restarted my phone cleaned out the cache I you know repaired the client I also uh, got rid of any of the icons, external icons. Basically, I put my phone in potato mode to try and get a stable connection, and none of that worked. So after a while, I did just, since I was fighting on the station itself, I, you know, I disengaged, I docked up, and I logged. I re-entered the fray when the system cap itself came down to around 500, and it was a more manageable fight at that point in time. Now, the outcome of the fight was that uh, Silent No Honk Forces did put the second hole timer down to the wire uh, where Genesis at that point turned their guns on their own Citadel and they got the Entosis on their own Citadel transferring ownership from the uh, one corporation get 
to the subsidiary corporation get to. So in the end, uh, Pan Gen did win the fight uh, based on the outcome of that station. However, it is noted that during that fight, Silent Hunk and No Forces did go out and take down another Citadel at that moment in time. Now, for accurate um, numbers for these fights, I do implore all the heads of these alliances, uh, both in Pantheon and Genesis, as well as in Silent Hunk and No, to please send me your after action reports from these fights so I can um, go over the statistics and inform everyone exactly how many ships were lost, what the outcome of the battle was, instead of just saying, hey, these citadels fell. Now, I am told that Pantheon and Genesis did go on the offensive this week, did press uh, a few timers, however, they were denied a few others. That being said, I am also told by a source within uh, know that several armor timers have been hit as well as hull timers set to expire tomorrow. As for specific numbers, I am told uh, for tomorrow the 16th sorry, 17th they will have 13 in hull and 14 citadels within armor. I'm recording this as an update to the war front report. Yesterday, during that fight for the third hold timer of K4, there were several battles that also took place. Uh, one of which those was in YAW, where both coalitions did meet and do battle on the Citadel itself. On the way to the fight, the Pan Gen fleet was slowed down by the Silent No forces of the delay bubble tactic. However, in system C3N on that gate uh, where both coalitions did enter the system there was some massive lag which did force pilots again to black screen and warp off. Those who did disconnect were told not to come back in as they would land within a warp bubble and just get massacred. Those who did not disconnect continued on to the target system of YAW where they did fight and they did lose against the onslaught of the silent no honk forces. With what was left of the defensive fleet retreating, silent did entosis YAW and take another point of Sob away. Another system did fall to the onslaught as well, that would be PUG, where that citadel was destroyed. Another citadel that also fell during this time was ETAC V within Quirius. Again, so this is two more citadels that were destroyed and two, at the end of the day, that were taken over via Entosis. That last citadel being taken over is that of KTAC 4, the much debated and fought over system over the last few weeks. Now, the system itself did not raise to the numbers if it did on the previous whole fight. The uh, system itself was between uh, 600 and 700 players and around 800 drones and all sides can collaborate and uh, agree on that the lag in these massive fights especially in K4 is a huge factor on how the outcome uh, was laid out. Many, uh, many pilots on both sides were getting the black screens we're getting warp offs, disconnects, no tie dye ever kicked in. And we were told by the devs and the community manager that the tie dye only kicks in on server load. And what we are facing is client load. And that that's why they're going to try and fix the client so that we don't risk experience such lag and disconnects and everything else. It was a hard fought battle. But the forces of Silent No and Honk did win the day, and the Citadel now stands as a monument to Dead Space, who now owns the system. Now, as we turn away from the front lines of the Massive War, we look to the uh, second small war that's going on, and that is between uh, Catch-22 as well as OGRM um, and SCG. 
I am told that when a fight over the Citadel BTAC X, that Catch-22 fought Red Machine as well as OG, that the battle itself was 200 on Catch-22 side, as well as 160 on the Red Machine OG and SCG side. I'm also told that during the battle, uh, Catch-22 did wipe the grid, killing all of Sandman's materials in the fight. There was some conflicting reports saying that Genesis was also on the field during this fight, but I am told by a source within leadership of Catch-22 that it was only Catch-22 on the grid at that time. These are just some of the kills during that battle. Now this also goes back to the story that we reported on last week uh, about how OG was aiding SCG for invading their territory. I am hit with a counter to that by Catch-22 saying that they did find out that OG attacked them because they believed that Catch-22 did enter a NIP with SCG, which they did not. Uh, Genesis and Pantheon signed that NAP, NIP with them, but they weren't included in uh, within the SCG uh, non-invasion pack. And that all the attacks have been in retaliation of a deal that they were never even a part of. And the history of this was actually gone into even further detail by Alex Vanna of Catch-22, stating that uh, to begin with, they need to go back to when Warp and DLT owned the 2PG constellation. FRA used to roam this area for content. We had some great fights there against both of these alliances. Then Warp and DLT fought each other, which led to the implosion of Warp, as we already know. Uh, we benefited from this situation by cleaning up the constellation from any structures, and they began their campaign against DLT. They were quite efficient against them. At one point, they even reached uh, out to stop the aggression. And at that end, they did even ask Catch-22 if they could join within that coalition. Tenet and FRA was against it because of the past uh, and also because that they had inside intel that they were just going to backstab Catch-22 after joining. So they cleaned uh, systems uh, 2PG to, to KW... Uh, TAC, uh, that was the DLT main staging area of all structures. They pulled back from the area because of their constant roams to keep their SOV there. At this point, a big teneferous area was free to claim and they started colonizing that pocket. Uh, as you might as well know, SEG was still at war with Jen and we always had support uh, to fight SEG. Uh, so colonization was quite easy at that time. So at the end, SCG retired from the war against Jen and signed that non-invasion pack. And that was the turning point for them to take back Teneforus uh, from Catch-22. Uh, Catch-22 tried to negotiate a NIP, but they didn't want to negotiate uh, a thing at the time, is what I'm being told. After that, they called their allies Void, OG, and RM to start reinforcing uh, their Catch-22 structures. With the new uh, No Silent Pangen War, uh, the Catch-22 didn't have support from their allies being busy, so they were pretty much outnumbered pretty quickly. But they did defend successfully in 2PG against SCG once, uh, that is, after the fight, and then they called their allies OG, and that's what we covered last week. Uh, he goes on to say that he really thinks that we could have, they could have held SCG by themselves, uh, but they didn't anticipate uh, help uh, from Red Machine and OG. Uh, he goes on to say that we didn't really actively join the war, and losing 2PG gave us a reason to join the fight. We are not looking to get back 2PG, as SCG will not fight any further than Teneforis. OG still fights uh, Catch-22 because they told that we have to pay for dropping Psalm in Angel Space, to keep the memory of war, but they let SCG keep uh, the Citadel into PG. So currently OG with RM and Wild Geese has been uh, successful right now hitting Catch-22 structures. Uh, they said that Void didn't come for more and they will basically want to stay out of the war uh, from their intel. Now, aside from that, something else did happen in Catch-22 space. That's right, some more shenanigans from the Home Heroes Alliance, who is now part of Pantheon. Now, if you recall, about 
two, maybe three episodes ago, we reported on the problems between Honey Badgers and HHA and how they were forced out and they joined Pantheon. Now, they went ahead and dropped Sov within Catch-22 space while being a part of Pantheon in system l one y tac iu now, this raised all sorts of alarms throughout Catch-22, and uh, a lot of the leadership was pissed off by this. So much, in fact, that a vote was called within Catch-22 to basically reset uh, diplomatic status with Pantheon because of this move. Now, this was going to be in case Pantheon did not relinquish or force HHA to give up that saw that they dropped in L1 Y Tech IU. Now, as this vote was still going on and set to expire on Friday, I was uh, contacted by some some banana saying that he was surprised by this move by HHA, and they are going to be removing that saw, giving back that system to Catch 22. Now, this in fact did uh, quash the vote, uh, and Catch 22 is now still a staunch ally of Pantheon. Now, in other news this week, Jay Factor, one of the head FCs of Pantheon, got himself in some hot water by some remarks in his corporation Discord. That by saying that they were going to dox a Hulk player, Cairo, and basically killing him in real life. Now, when I saw this screenshot, I reached out to Jay Factor to ascertain the validity of this, or basically just to see exactly what's going on, because as you can uh, review from the past, even back in the war against Genesis and Death Phantom, I am not a huge fan of even joking about doxing. There have been content creators out there and people who have actually been hurt and killed by doxing. I don't care if it's a joke or not. I can't be unbiased in, in this feature. It is just wrong to joke about. That being said, I did reach out to J Factor to find out exactly what was going on with this. And he told me that he removed a spy uh, that got caught hot miking on an enemy Discord during a fleet op. So I did something to see if I still had a problem. Had to be something they would blow up on. There is literally nothing actually threatened. Three different people talking here. No one actually threatened to kill someone if you read it properly. But I see where it could be certainly be inferred. What you don't see is the convo ended right then and there, and I contacted the two about not saying things like that they were going to IP trace them and yada yada. Uh, he did go on to say that he is going to write an apology, uh, but honestly this happened in his own Discord, and that he orchestrated this whole thing to burn a spy. And that, you know, probably he went a little bit too far. Now, he did put out a public apology that some have been ridiculing him on. Now, it's a, an apology, but not an apology. Basically, it's an apology with a caveat or two. Basically, the community is calling him out on just not putting out an apology, saying, hey, I'm sorry for what I said. Uh, I shouldn't have joked about it, and I'm truly sorry. Instead of saying, I'm sorry, this is the reason why I did it, and it is what it is now he was brought to face this in a massive thread by Sandman who did call him out on this now this moral debate kind of ran for a few days throughout reddit as well as many of the discords whether or not which side you were falling on and people did choose one camp or the other uh, they all basically say that yes he was wrong for doing it but he's not wrong for doing it uh, in the end he did apologize, even though the apologize was what it was. But he did come forward and apologize for it. Now, a day after that, they did call out Cairo for doxing himself as well. Uh, that happened in the past. They basically say that they are still waiting for three months for the apologize, the apologies from Cairo himself about posting pictures from someone's private home on a honk public discord. Now, a member of No... Uh, police stop did actually come to Cairo's defense in this thread, saying that Cairo didn't even post the house pictures. It was him that did it, and the photos three months ago was of a house that had a ton of honk posters on the house, and that the address of the house was censored off, 
and that the owner of the house wasn't even an Eve member, it was a dude from a graduation. I mean, I don't think that can be considered as doxing if it's posted of just someone's random house with a bunch of things on it with the information scratched off it. Uh, especially since it's not a actual player or member of the community itself. Now, unfortunately, that is not where the troubles were left with False Trajectory, uh, J Factors uh, Corporation, or Alliance. They, in fact, they actually had a theft from False Directory this month, uh, this past week. The thief, I'm told, made off with around four billion worth of ore and assets during a move from the corporation hangar. However, I am told that the community of False Trajectory pulled together and restored that amount, giving the player that was the victim in this that money back for their loss. The player's name was Destroyer of Ore. One of the outstanding longtime members of the Void Alliance, Nil, says goodbye and leaves the Void Alliance setting their sights on bigger and brighter things. Now the decision to leave Void was done by its leadership due to uh, irreconcilable differences between fundamental stances within the Alliance. Now this all came to head one day when I am told that members of uh, NILF were being very racist and political within the Void chats and the leadership refused, uh, NILF leadership refused to do anything uh, about it. Several members were banned from the Void chat due to this, and uh, Sarperion, as well as, I believe it was Amoxin and other leaders from Void, uh, put forth terms to put the leash back around NILF. Sarperion called NILF leadership out on basically having silence to address or even apologize for the actions of its members. And Sarperion basically says that these actions will not be tolerated any further within the Void Alliance. Now they did have some conditions to keep Nilf within Void and put them back on what they call a positive track. And that was the removal of several members from Nilf, uh, including Rep, Karzog, the removal of Sins and Bible from the Nilf Council, and a public apologies from both of them. They also wanted the addition of Sarparion, Bacchus, Amoxin, or Sesco uh, from Void Leadership to be entered into the NILF decision-making council. And they also demanded the council's statement of condemnation of the behavior of those making personal attacks, harassment in the last few days, including but not limited to Zorora. They put that forth expecting a reply within 48 hours where the reply, NILF said that they were basically leaving the Void Alliance. Now, NILF does have a period of two weeks uh, that will keep their blue standings within Void. That's from October 17th to October 31st, as they are in their moving uh, period, pulling out of Void space, going to wherever they have their sights set on. Now, sources within NILF say that they are receiving several offers. However, they are leaning heavily towards joining No Please Stop. Now, this wouldn't be the first corp leaving its alliance uh, this week, as reported on Reddit earlier today, as Retribution, R-E-T-C, has declared their independence and withdrawal from the Pantheon Coalition. Now, this looks like it's stemmed from pressure uh, from the silent No Honk forces in their onslaught of Pantheon space. But uh, a representative from Rec basically says that it's clear that the values and strategic objectives of uh, their organizations were not basically in alignment with Pantheons. And they're splitting for a amicable as possible situation. They said they will defend their spate, however they will not enter the war making aggressive maneuvers towards their once former allies or silent no or honk. They are setting their, standard, their standings as their own and they will defend against any aggressor. They do want it to be known that anyone within the Pantheon Coalition that do have assets within their citadels to please contact them so they can coordinate a removal of your items from their uh, system, their structures. And that's the stories I have for this week's community news. We're going to move next into the big kills and the solo kills of the week. Uh, I do also want to apologize if I did leave out any stories again. 
Uh, I've been stretched very thin over the last two weeks, especially with the two deaths in my family. Um, but I, I will, again, make strives to, you know, get the news faster out to you guys. All right, there is no Corp Alliance Spotlight this week. If you or your corporation or alliance are interested in a spotlight on uh, my broadcast, please contact me via Discord where we can discuss exactly what I need from you uh, to get it going. Now, as for big kills of the week, we're going to start off with the Beasts of the South uh, with a 9 billion Rattlesnake kill. Genesis comes in this week with a 4.8 billion Makara kill, a 4.7 billion Rattlesnake kill, a 3.5 billion Coveter 2 kill, and a 3.5 billion Outpost kill. Pantheon uh, sent me a kill of a 6.9 billion Nereus. Six Seal Alliance comes in with heavy, heavy kills. Uh, six Macario kills, uh, 3.6 billion, 4.7 billion, 9.5 billion, 4.9 billion, four, and two at 4.5. They have also killed four Balgorns this week. Uh, Nine billion, a 5.7 billion, a 5.4 billion, and a 4.8 billion. Two rattlesnake kills at uh, 4 billion and 5 billion. They also had a 5 billion Dominic's 2 kill, a 5.6 billion Stratios kill, a 4.7 billion Vindicator kill, and a 8.2 billion Nereus 2 kill. And Silent uh, Federation uh, hits me up with a 4.8 billion Balgorn kill. Now remember, these big kills are just sent to me. Um, I do not really include the ones that are in these massive fleet fights, but any kills that you have for roams and such, please do send them to me. Remember to always add your corp and alliance that you belong to. This way it's just easier for me to get them onto the list. Now, I do have two honorable mentions this week before we get into the solo kills of the week, everyone's favorite spotlight, as well as your chance of winning a free Omega combo. Uh, the first goes out to uh, Augie Oi Oi with three, count them three, Makario kills. These are solo hunt kills that he that he went out and killed. Now, these were ratting vessels, which is why you do see NPCs on the kill mail, and why they would not be included in a actual solo kill of the week uh, entry, con you know, for the contest. The next goes out to, and I do love this, by the way, and I love seeing stuff like this, by a player called Venture311. Now, the reason I'm putting him on this list is he has killed a 2.9 billion Estero with a Venture 3. Now, it is uh, past the date, which is why he's not in the list this week, uh, because the dates range on these kill mails uh, between the airing of the last episode, which was the 6th, till today, whichever day this actually goes live. But I've spoken with this pilot, and he flies only Venture 3s for uh, PvP uh, instances. In fact, here is a picture of his ship. Look at how many kill mails this man has with just Adventure 3. Now, this is content. This is wholesome content he created for himself. And because of which, I am giving him, in a separate category, his own free Omega combo. That's right. So, uh, Venture 311, please contact me via Discord, and I'm going to send you a free Omega combo for this beautiful, beautiful thing you sent me. And now to the entries of this week's Solo Kill Mail of the Week contest and a chance at winning a free Omega combo. Starting us off this week is Virtual PGE with a 2.213 billion Terra kill. Ace comes in next with a 2.443 billion Astero kill. Mystery Meow with a 2.503 billion Ashimu kill. Razak47 with a 2.552 billion Astero kill. Not You Again with a 4.7 billion Macario kill. Reaper of Twice with a 5 billion Vindicator kill. Wind with a 5.1 billion Badger 2 kill. Apima with a 6.7 billion Bestower kill. Mr. Espresso with a 7 billion Stratios kill. And the winner of this week's free Omega combo is Dark Knight version 01 with a 13 billion badger kill 
Congratulations on winning this week's contest. Uh, hit me up on Discord so I can arrange to get that prize out to you. Now that's it for this week. Again, I do apologize for uh, this episode being late. Again, um, real life trumps everything. and I have been feeling a little burnt out lately. Uh, I spoke to a few people in the Gulag uh, comms about it last night. How I'm just kind of feeling uh, just a little pulled in every direction. But it is what it is. Um, but if you do need more news in your life and my video isn't enough for you, uh, there is two sources you can go to. The first one being Sky News, and that's Russia's premier Eve Echoes news outlet. Uh, don't worry, the whole episode is in English subtitles if you do not speak Russian. They do have a great production of, over there, and their videos are out pretty fast. I, th I would say just about every other week or every week. Uh, and I would also recommend you going over and having a blast at uh, Rambo's podcast, The Echoes of New Eden which features every week roundtable discussions with various members from his Discord server, as well as an in-depth interview with a figure from the community itself. So, again, I wish everyone to have a great week, a great weekend, fly safe, and remember, we are always one vision, one purpose, one front. <laughs>